Hey, today we want to share an interview with you I did with Robert Prein. Last week we already shared his video Cowboy with you and today we have him back to get to know the creator behind the artwork a little bit better. In case you want to see the entire one hour long interview that we had, then I invite you to become a Patreon of Cap de la Vie and support our project. By being a Patreon, you not only get to see the full-length interviews, but you also get access to all of our content one week in advance, plus additional bonus contents as well. Enough for me there, so let's jump right into the interview and let Robert introduce himself. Well, my name is Robert and uh, well, I'm trained as a dancer and an actor and a singer, kind of like for musicals. Um, and I've always also been in the musicals, but I'm also developing uh, more in contemporary art, uh, contemporary dance and uh, acting uh, as a standalone uh, for a screen and also for theater. Um, but I don't know, I think it's because of my education, which uh, well gave us a lot of opportunity to create that I also like creating whatever content it is. So film or shows, whatever. Yeah. And that means next to all the physical performance qualities you have as dancer, actor, singer, etc., as you mentioned, you're also doing editing for your video projects and all those things all yourself too. Yeah, those are kind of things that they, they kind of come along and yeah, you learn them as you go, you know. <laughs> That's a lot of things and a lot of stuff to be busy with. Especially during Corona times in which well, practically everything is online. Uh, you have some extra time also because you don't have to travel anywhere and you, you cannot do anything. You start to pick up on those uh, new traits. Yeah. You have to adapt when the stage is not an option right. anymore. And video is, let's face it, video is an so, amazing medium, right? Well, you can do a lot of things with it. Personally, I just think that we have to be careful to not just hold a camera on something and say that is now a new thing, but we should get involved actually in, okay, it's a different medium that has its own language that I need to learn to be able to use it to its proper potential, the same way that I can use the stage, which is its own language, just to be aware of that. You can come really close, uh, for example, when you have the stage and the audience is, is just two separate things and you can never get closer or further away. With the video, you can direct that, but if you don't, if you don't use that, that those options and the different lenses and stuff, it can become very flat and unemotional. But if you do use it in the proper way, it can be super powerful. Uh, how did you end up doing all of this? What was your path? so to say, to becoming an artist and developing all of those skills? Every time I'm, I'm asked that question, I always feel like, uh, well, there is always uh, some kind of part of me that really liked performing, um, but it was not in my family's generation or anything that, that something like that would, would come up as a profession. So I first went to university and did everything I, I uh, well, a normal person in, in my kind of trajectory, you know, you go to the high school and you go to uh, university then uh, would do uh, until I came, I came to some, I did gymnastics and I wanted to, to get better at gymnastics and more clean and stuff because it was kind of sloppy. And then I, I, I heard some Russians did ballet classes to increase the the points they get at the gymnastics tournament so i thought you know what i am willing to do anything i sacrifice everything and i i, I would i would just go to the ballet class of course i was the only guy um but they they picked up on some some things and uh, and there was classes in contemporary and jazz because uh, substitute teachers and i was like wow a new a new world is opening you know it's like there's so much creativity because, well, I, in the gymnastics, uh, it would mostly be uh, learning a trick uh, for a couple of months. And the, the more difficult it become, the longer you spend on one trick. 
but with with dance for example you can do anything and from there i rolled into some preschool program and from there into an academy and well then you get also singing and acting and uh, well, it was amazing i thought well this is this is this makes my heart beat faster you know and it's it's so creative and it could express myself in so many ways i mean it's not only dance it's acting it's singing and you can combine all of the three and then you bring in a camera and it becomes a whole different dimension uh, the, the possibilities are endless and it's so I, I think it just you can keep exploring you know it's like your own discovery of the of the arts so that's that's kind of well the, the choice was not really hard the only thing of course is a, as a uh going from something like studying for becoming a, a researcher or a doctor and going into a little bit unstable job as a as a performer you know it's it's, it's not as sure as the other one uh, that was maybe the hardest choice I had to to make, uh, and then it has always always been the best choice I ever made, as well. <laughs> you seem very happy about the choices that you made, so that's great. <laughs> Did you receive support as the uh, in that as well through your your parents at the time when you started? Yeah, well, I think my dad was less supportive. He didn't really like the idea. I thought more like a hobby, maybe. Uh, I think my mom was always okay with it. Um, and for example, when I when I ran into colleagues from the university, they said, well, I didn't even think that would be possible as a job. And they were the same like me, just they didn't get into contact with it. And uh, yeah, but support, yes. Yes, from friends and family and, well, yeah. Enough, enough uh, support in, uh, indeed. <laughs> Now, you do so many different things, uh, as we already mentioned. What is, or do you have a vision between all of those things that you're having as an artist and creator yourself with all the things that you do? Yeah, this is also something I've thought about many times. Uh, as an artist, you have, of course, a story, but the, the first, the, the main thing for me is always entertainment, because I'm, because, uh, People want to see something also to be entertained and, and you can give a lot of value or weight to that kind of entertainment you make. You can make it very light. For example, you can make a short sketch or something funny that is lighthearted or you can make it very dramatic and, and you want to get a, a, a world changing subject uh, in there, you know, and then make people think about it. And the choice is all up to you. I think for me, uh, I always like it to bring people, I'm not saying that it's 100% true, but I always like to say, uh, or, or that I always do this, but, but what has always inspired me is to bring people a little bit out of their reality right now. So into something different, either fantasy or sci-fi, you know, something that, that, that could get them away from troubles that are happening in life. And for example, I stay a little bit more away from... Uh, very dramatic situations that you could have in normal life because we are we are already in the normal life and everybody has their problems. So either either if it's entertaining like laughing or not laughing and thinking about something, for example, uh, where do we come from or are we the only ones in the universe? Those kind of things they they really trigger my creations, you know, um, or just making people laugh in any other way. It, th then it doesn't really matter if it's like real life or not but i think that's kind of i want to get people into a different different world and make them experience something and then they go back into the real world and think ah, okay <laughs> or they had a laugh whatever <laughs> nice beautiful i mean we shot the a short movie of yours here on cap tel aviv cowboy and I'm just intrigued a little bit, okay, how did this whole project come together? Where did the idea for this uh, clip came from and what was the process of creating it as well? Well, back, back at that time I made that, I was in the, in, the, in the lockdown in Barcelona, which meant you could not even go outside, you could not do anything. So I, I, I had some props and I had this cowboy hat and I wanted to do something with it, I already knew that. Um, and of course... Well, I like, I like collaborations, but back then it could not happen. I could not do anything with anybody. So I thought I have to be my own cameraman. And well, the, also that was a time in which the medium of film became more and more interesting. And I knew to get the quality of, of movies up, you need to know something about lighting. 
And so lighting was one of the things that I wanted to research. And I thought, yeah, why not just make something nice of it, you know? Um, so that was what I tried to do. And I don't know, I had a script. I wrote it down. I kind of knew what I wanted to do. I, I wrote it in the morning. Then I just set up some lighting and stuff that I thought would be cool to use. And I just went for it and then improvised the whole day as well. Because, well, there was nobody I had to take into account that he or she knew his lines or her lines, you know. And that that was not the case. So I just went for it. And, uh, well, months later, I went to the Netherlands again. And my sister owns a horse. So I thought, you know, how cool that we have a cowboy movie and we just incorporate the horse. So she, she walked around a little bit with the horse and I made some videos with that and that was it. But I think yeah, that's like being creative, you know, on the spot, what's, what's there and what, and yes. sometimes you just see, even, even in, when making movies, sometimes, sometimes just something happens. For example, one time we, we came across a, a Buddhist monk in the Netherlands. It's not something you, you run into every day. Right. And it happened to coincide with some kind of project I was making. And I just, you just ask that person on the spot, can we make a real quick shot of you, you know? And then that's just a gift, you know? <laughs> so that's kind of how it worked. It was a, it was an experiment and it turned out to be very creative. Nice. It's beautiful to, to see how, okay, just based on this situation of, well, I have a cowboy hat, I want to do something. It's just me. Well, just got to do all the worlds myself then, I guess. And um, in the end, it becomes a very original project that is funny and it's beautiful to watch and very entertaining. And at the same time, you still have this context of how and when it was created and the mirror of that kind of situation. So you yeah, get exactly. still those layers inside of it, which is very beautiful, I think. Um, now, I heard that you're already busy again with a next project, some, some movie. How much can you tell us concerning that? Well, I have four years of, uh, of, of storyline there, if you want to now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I wanted to... I, I, of course, uh, that was actually the, one of the first film projects I, went to, I wanted to, to do. And it was in a time in which I had done some, some jobs abroad and uh, kind of missed my fellow colleagues. And, uh, um, well, when you start working, you, you get kind of like acquainted with a lot of people that uh, around you that you just feel like, oh, I want to I want to work with you together, but I don't know when we have the opportunity to do that. And so also we are all, always every day in class and you see a lot of people every day in class and some of them are not in projects. And I thought, well, that's actually a shame. It's, it's talent just being wasted every day. You know, every day you're not working as a performer. Actually, it's just a talent that's wasted that day. You know, so I thought, how can we bring all these people on to one, one, one project and, and make an opportunity ourselves while getting some message across that I thought was interesting. I, I like science fiction a lot um, and fantasy. So I am really interested in, um, well, are we the only ones in the universe? What's out there? What's happening, you know, and what's happening outside of our globe that's influencing us as a human race and and then also how small we are as human beings if you think about it like well you're here for 70 80 90 years hopefully maybe even longer some some of us may be unfortunately shorter and then it's thinking well that's the time you you are spending here on earth what you're doing it with it and what does it actually mean you know what what does it mean that we spent so many so many years or here on earth and, and where where is it going what is it adding to so those are kind of things that I find really interesting. And I wanted to make a movie about that, not about aliens or stuff, but just about, well, where, where, do, we see, where do we see ourselves in the future as a human race? For example, right now we have wars, we have, we have, we are, there are people, well, killing other people right now. There are suppressions, there are, uh, we have uh, um, racism, for example, we have not equality of all people. And then I, think a lot about, for example, you have always met somebody in your life that is very supportive of you and that makes you feel like you're on top of the world, right? In, at some point, maybe it was your family member or teacher or your girlfriend or whatever. You, you feel like you, 
this is what you normally achieve but when that person starts to you know talk to you you feel like you feel like you could be here or even like here you know and for example that's what like a football coach does to his team members and then i thought think about if we are all these kind of coaches to each other then then you're not like run by fear or by maybe a lack of self-confidence or or by uh, jealousy or by wanting more power is just everybody has enough and there is together so much more so that is what i wanted to express with this movie and i've been working with on it for for four years now from getting the idea to writing to getting the people together and filming it and then editing it editing it and now we are almost rounding it off um yeah. That's kind of the, the concept. Sorry, it took so long to, to, to tell you about it. <laughs> uh, what you didn't mention there is the title. <laughs> Colors. The title is Colors. And, it, and it's actually a movie in which I want to sh show the whole world dancing as one, which is symbolic for the equality of the people around the globe. And we are dancing all together to uh, emit a lot of energy, to, to create an energetic shield around the globe because an... Uh, an energetic uh, uh, shockwave from outer space because of collision of something uh, travels through space and we have to protect ourselves from that. That is actually the, the storyline. But now you know the rationale behind it. <laughs> That's beautiful to use the togetherness and the energy we have together as our ultimate power of yeah. protection. Yeah, and it's an action movie, you know, without any violence. And that's, that's also a statement. That's very interesting. Um, you say you're almost running up. Is there already planned um, a date when it will go public? And if yes, where will, will people be able to see it? The, the date is not set yet because uh, um, I'm not sure how much work it still is. It will, it will be a few more months, but I don't, know, I don't know exactly how many. And I'm not in a rush, but... I'm kind of like seeing what's happening because I want to release it on film festivals and right now everything is online and I would really like it if people go to the theater to see it. So I'm kind of like postponing it a little bit to, to see if the theaters are going to be open again and people can see it live because I think it's more engaging and it, that is also the, that brings more people together instead of behind the computer, you know, in, in real life it brings more people together and that's the whole intention of the movie. Um, and then it will go like probably like a year in the in the film festival circuitry and then it will go um, in Vimeo and on YouTube channels uh, that hopefully will uh, want, will want to show the movie and uh, and then eventually it will so there's 90 people working on it they will all share it through their social media and well the 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 process is then laid out you know then that's the distribution for us <laughs> You started to mention like, okay, you want to do it in a film festival or premiere it there because people are coming together um, and create a different experience compared to everybody watching it on their own or maybe with a friend in front of their laptop or television. Um, now, you're also a performer, not just a movie maker. So how do you see yourself inside of all of this? concerning okay when you're on stage you have a certain relationship with your audience then you're also making movies and clips that uh, the audience is looking at on their laptop uh, and youtube or something and then talking about film festivals and having big amounts of people together there where do you see yourself there in inside of all of this and how do you feel about it well i absolutely th the thing is yeah, it's like I spent four years on this movie, which is not normal, of course. Cowboy was made maybe in in one week. You know, I had one week recording, then going to recording the, the horse and then doing some editing and stuff. So uh, the thing is with, with, with doing films, you can produce many films in one year and mostly with performances on stage, you can do a couple of performances in a year and they will be performed many times. So that's a difference. The, I love being on stage because you get direct feedback from the audience and you can play with them. Every show is different. If you make a movie, everybody will see exactly the same product. It is that one. Um, so how do I see myself 
in these kind of of course in the movies I always perform as well so that is that is something and you and you can show the movie as many times as you want to with the the thing with stage is for example there are some some performances uh, that I would really like to see sometime again but it's not possible because they, they don't do it anymore and even the people who were in it they are not performing anymore they have retired or anything you know uh, or in different projects uh, and that is also the beauty of stage performance you, you have to be there is the magic in the moment and it it might be imperfect even you know you might, there might be somebody doing a step wrong and there's no retake but that is also the beauty of it you're you're so on edge, uh, so uh, so sharp during a performance because you have to be able to improvise if something happens, you know. And 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 every every night you get the different response. It's 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 great. So I would definitely love to do that again. Um, and with film, yeah, you just make it, and everybody can see it until eternity. <laughs> And I also love that concept, you know, if you make something that, that you went through a lot of trouble for. Yeah. But then I understand still that um, for you, the, the contact with the audience is still very important. Not just um, the relation of the audience with be it the show or be it the movie, but as well, I understand a bit that you're very interested in seeing how they react. I, yeah, yeah, that. But I think uh, being on stage, it doesn't matter too much if it's being in a production that's not specifically mine. It's about the relationship with the audience more than when you make a movie. It's more about uh, what I, um, especially the. For example, in a stage production, it can be somebody else's. You know, like because everybody uh, has performed in all the other shows. It's not always that you build the show yourself from the ground up. But then you put yourself into a character and you tell your story that you want to tell to the world through in the boundaries of that character that you're playing by, by then. Even, be it a dancer or actor, you're always a character. Um, but, but the movies that, you, that I can make are, are movies that I can build up the whole storyline from the beginning. So it, everything it says in the movie is because I wanted to say that. Every character, every dancer in the movie does something because I want. I have it's it's part of a an idea that you want to bring to life, and then, then it's more about you still engaging the audience, but in your story, and otherwise it's engaging the audience in your character, and I think that's the difference. That's a nice way to look at it. Um, for stage, though, you did you also direct shows? Uh, for the stage involving multiple people in your career? Um, for so far, it was only smaller projects. Uh, in school, we had to do it a lot. So um, I think maximum 10 people. Uh, and then probably I would be co-directing with somebody else as well. And I've done some some duets, of course, um, for uh, for for uh, assignments, like, like, like entertainment uh, purposes, yeah. Because it sounds to me like, okay, there is very much a vision that you're having for whatever project you want and um yeah yeah I, i'm not done yet i'm not done yet i mean yeah. time is limited you know you can only do so many projects in a year but yeah definitely yeah. there will be there will follow more creations uh, we might be working together in the future you never know who knows <laughs> well we're doing something together here right now in a way so <laughs> um you mentioned earlier that every day or every moment that an artist is not working, let's say it's a waste of time or of talent. Um, what do you think is there the responsibility of us artists in a way? Um, yeah, I think, I think it is on the one hand, probably the step to creating something, creating something yourself and setting up a show. It's a lot of work. And it involves a lot of other things than just uh, dancing or performing, of course. And it's um, I, I can, in experience, say that I thought it would be more easy. In experience, I thought it would be faster. I thought it would be more easy. It's a lot of work. And I think um, if we start creating opportunities, for example, now I would like to be part of other ones' performance for a little while because it's been a lot of work uh, uh, doing this. And uh, if we if if it, if you have a group of pe of 20 people and every year one of them is creating something and the other people can 
can perform in that, you only have to do one year of a lot of work and the other years, uh, 19 years, you can just be performing and having fun. Or you do it more together and you distribute the different tasks. And I think um, if, if, if you feel yourself waiting next to the line, like for somebody to call you, I think it is time to not wait and put that time into doing something. H however small, it can be a small duet of five minutes. You can make a video about it and you can show it already. And then you're actually working. So work in the end becomes as well as state of mind in a way. Yeah, it's like you're a creative and make, make your creative choices. Like you can be creative in your dance or in the whole life that you're living. Is this state of mind for you what is making someone an artist as well? Well, some of us probably are lucky enough to, have, to be performing every day. So, yeah, I think, I think you're, well, in, 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 a, in a sense, everybody is being creative. But yes, if you want to be an artist and you want to be dancing, you want to be acting, you want to be singing, it's, you have to bring in the creativity in all aspects of your life and start working on, opportun on making opportunities for yourself. Actually, that's very business-like, I think, creating opportunities. Uh, that's, that's more a business kind of looking at how you see your life. And that is, I think, the most essential part of it. So, yeah, and, and how you do it is that is the creative way in which you give purpose to that. <laughs> for my own observation, to, to stay with this topic for a moment, artists are often seen in society as those weirdos somewhat, those people that don't have a real job. Um, but what you're talking about, and I completely agree with it, is actually very much a real job in the way that you have to create your own opportunities, you have to be busy on it, and sometimes asking more work from a person than if you are sitting in an office and have your security there. So would you agree with that comparison in a way? No, I think... Um, yeah, the comparison is right, but for example, like any job requires a lot of effort if you want to be good at it, you know, you can, you can, you don't have to be good at it and you don't have to spend so much time in it. And then you, uh, some people have the talent that without a very little effort, they will still reach the top. But if you, uh, want to reach a certain level, you always have to put in a lot of effort, whether you want to be a lawyer or a doctor or a dancer, it, it, it will require a lot from you. And, and I think also those things you have to learn a lot on the side to make yourself grow in, in, in different areas. Um, yeah, I think I've always had side jobs, to be honest, uh, to, for example, to finance projects that I want to create. Um, uh, yeah, well, apart from all the funding and, and, and the sponsors that you can attract, there, there is, uh, it's really nice to have a certain base, you know, especially if you, if you cannot perform at the same time that you create, that means, of course, you don't get income at that point. So it's nice to have something that's very stable. And that is the, well, if you say like the normal world. And what I get is that a lot of people are very interested in what we do. Because it's so different. Like I said, uh, when I was in university, and I, and I see them later on, and when I when I went through my whole uh, theater academy, uh, they they're like, "Wow, that that's so different, you know? Well, you're so different. That's so. I didn't even think that would be an option. It's such a different life, and and we think it's a cool life. And other people might just look at it and see like, "Well, how do you do it? You know, how do you do it? Going from one project to another and." trying to get your funding to create something and yeah for us it's a way of life and we love it uh, and it's hard work but of course the other jobs are also hard work so i think we should just appreciate each other and i see how much for example i, I also work in an it company i see how much effort they put into what they do and it, it it's as much as we do yeah. definitely so it's, it's both a job full time for sure for sure um, and it should both be seen as super valid jobs as well, I think. Um, so inside of all of this, where do you see the, um, the role, let's say, of the artist in our society? Not just specifically for dancers, but for the arts in general. I think, well, 
there there's there's i think a few themes like yeah family and friends you know social context um you have your work your income uh your passions and there's entertainment that gives you that gets you away from everything that's necessary because your brain doesn't function 100 percent effective every all day long every day so you need you need the you need entertainment to to kind of even if it's a hobby or you go and see a show or you see some television program or, or a movie, you need some, some time to empty your brain or, or actually not empty your brain. It's, it's, it's more like, you know, that they say that you, you use only 5% of your brain or something, which, which I, I think is not true. You, you, you use probably more percentage of your brain than you think. Um, but the different areas in society can stimulate different parts of your brain. You know, the social aspects, the work uh, and the, the hobbies and entertainment. And I think then you with the entertainment business, well, as an artist, you tap into a certain uh, theme or, or, or subject that you want to stimulate the, 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 the brains of the people with. That can be what I said, like you can make people laugh. You can have them think about like major topics. Um, but th I think that that is essential because you're stimulating one part of the brain that's not stimulated during working as a lawyer or, or spending time with your family. It's a, a different part and it's essential for the development of everyone. And it's also a process of reflection. Also, it, it could be. Yeah, it could be. It could be inspiring and reflecting like, oh, this is this is how I do it. They, this is how they do it or, you know. In any way, it could be inspiring, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Capital Abri. And if you enjoyed this video, click the like button. You can find the full interview on our Patreon page, where you can also directly propose your own questions for any future interviews we will do, or directly here on YouTube underneath all the videos we publish in the comment section. If you're an artist yourself and want to be featured here on Capital Abri, don't hesitate to contact us through our social media. All information to that, also in the video description. Enjoy the rest of your day and see you next week. We feature new artists every Friday and come back with new interviews every Sunday.